for you, sir. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey guys, this is Brandon over at eConnect. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just give it one more minute and uh, see if anybody else joins us and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, good morning guys. We'll go ahead and get started. It looks like uh, we've got a little input from everybody and they kind of want to cover a little bit of everything from user setup to camera configuration to point of sale configuration. So um, let's go ahead and start with user setup. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go over here to setup and then we'd go over to the second drop down line below to users and then user list. Now your current users are going to go ahead and populate here in this whole field right here. Um, if you want to, let's say, edit a user or check on a user or reset a password, anything like that, this is where you're going to go. You're going to go ahead and highlight the username and you're going to go to the right here and you're going to have the information for that user. Um, it's up to you how detailed you want to get in filling this out. It's always good, uh, especially if you're going to have a lot of users like this uh, property does here. You're going to want to get as detailed as possible as far as email addresses, uh, first and last name, uh, contact number, and whatnot. Um, under the uh, default time zone, you're going to want to go ahead and select wherever you guys are because um, that's going to go ahead and set the time zone for that user when they log into the application. Also. As you move down, you don't really have to be concerned about this. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and have things set up in 24-hour time uh, format, go ahead and select this checkbox as well. Um, I know a lot of people in the surveillance uh, world like to utilize the 24-hour time zone. So uh, moving down there, you won't see a password population uh, within here. But this is where you're going to go if you want to, like, say, reset a password, um, change somebody's password for any reason, or if they forgot their password. You'll just go ahead and retype it, um, and then retype it in the retype, and then you're going to push Save. That'll effectively change their password from that point forward, um, and then that'll be their new password. If you go to Permissions, that's going to go ahead and take you over to uh, view the permissions that are installed for that current user. Um, th this, this is where you're going to go ahead and give uh, certain users access or take away certain access to certain users. Um, these are pre-built. Um, we can uh, uh, 
you know, we, we can edit those pre-built users. Um, we can create new ones completely based upon what you guys want to utilize at your property. Um, this person is only a viewer, okay? So if you want to give admin access to somebody, you can as well. Um, sorry, hold on a second. Okay? And then uh, we could, uh, the, the best way to do this, if you want to say, okay, I want to go ahead and make this person an admin of the system now, all you do is highlight and you move the directional arrows for that permission to be sent over to the other side. If you want to take away that admin privilege, you just highlight that and bring that back over. Um, pretty straightforward. They made it real simple. Uh, if we want to dig into as far as editing the permission groups, what we'd want to do is we'll go ahead and go, go over here. We go to permissions. And right here is those pre-existing permissions that you guys saw on that last screen. And within those pre-existing permissions, we'll have the individual permissions that we can take away or we can add from our selected uh, permissions builder over here on the right-hand side. Um, and, and it's completely up to you. We do create default permissions for everybody's property. Everybody gets a viewer, um, a service only, and that is only used for the application. That's not going to be used um, for specific users. So don't worry about the service only one. We can go over that here in a minute, though. Um, sysadmin, uh, that, that's definitely one that you're going to want to um, be careful with as far as who you have a system admin assigned to. That's typically something that we really only use for the eConnect uh, support login for when we go ahead and we need to support you guys or if we need to make configuration changes during updates or anything like that. That gives us complete access to everything and to alter configuration. So you want to be careful with that one. We don't, we don't, that's definitely not one that you want to give people um, uh, everyday access to. Um, so with that in mind, we also have uh, an admin up here. Um, that, that's typically going to be like power users, people that are going to set up the system for people. Um, and, and again, you, you can add and take away permissions for any of these specific uh, user groups that are pre-made. Um, as you can see here, you got user details remove, uh, user details update, permissions modify, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm modifying permissions. Um, user permissions, associate user, and so on. Um, you can go through here, and again, you can take away. All you have to do is click on the little X, and that'll take away the permission. Now, if you want to actually add one of these over here to one of the specific permission groups, all you have to do is left click, hold down your left click, drag it over, and drop it into that actual specific user you'd like to add that permission to. Um, again, it's, uh, it's pretty user friendly. It's a nice feature, especially if you want to control access. You don't typically want a bunch of people in the eConnect application changing configurations, adding things, removing things. Um, so that, that's really going to be a based on your property and who you want to have permissions and who you want to you know, uh, limit permissions to. And that's something that will always be available to help you guys with, even if you give us a call on our, our support line, as well as our support email, which is just support dot eConnect dot TV. Um, I'm sorry, support at eConnect dot TV. Uh, we can be reached there as well if you want to go in further detail or if you want to, you know, figure out how to make a specific user group for, you know, your property. So with that said, if we go ahead and go back over, I'm sorry, real quick before we leave this screen, I just wanted to show you here down at the bottom left is if you do in fact want to add a separate user group, um, you're going to want to go down here. You're going to type the name of that group, add, okay? And then you can start, after you add that into the field, then you can start adding your permissions into that new user group that you've created. Uh, so it's, like I said, it's pretty straightforward here. Uh, you can give us a call if you want to uh, kind of have specific help in setting up user groups for your property, which we'll have no problem doing there for you. Uh, second. And then uh, you guys probably have noticed since we're over here, I want to go over this too. Um, see where theirs are here. So you probably have seen um, a service user. 
and you guys' server, server, I'm sorry, uh, user list. That's something that we specifically set up um, for the application to utilize, and that's something that we can't have deleted, we cannot have altered, that just needs to stay there. Typically, we'll put in uh, do not delete in here, just so you guys are aware that that cannot be deleted. Um, that is something that the system relies on, so if you see something that says do not delete service user, go ahead and leave it be. Um, again, it's just something that the application actually uses itself to go ahead and uh, function with the uh, system. Um, so with, with, with that said, that's, that's pretty much straightforward on that. Um, if you guys want to go into even more detail, we, we can do that as well with uh, logical groups. And what that, uh, what that enables us to do, for instance, if you want to create a group up here, um, you can create a group, call it whatever you, know, whatever you guys need to call it in your, uh, at your property. You can add users to that group, okay? And then within that user group or that uh, group that you've created, you can give access to certain plugins, and then you can add within those plugins what you can add to that group. Uh, whether you want this group to be permitted to see, um, you know, uh, this revenue center, you drag. You're going to drag and drop over here to the permitted entities um, and so forth. And if you want to delete them, you just can drag them back and you can move those to the permitted ones. Um, this is really a little going into a little more detail as far as it, with the users and the user group setups. But uh, if you want to, uh, just reach out to us and we can help you guys locally. I don't want to necessarily keep everybody on this screen. Uh, if they don't necessarily want to go into this far of a detail uh, in setting up the user groups and logical groups. That's something you could reach out to us and we'll be more than happy uh, to assist you with. So as far as users, that, that's how that's set up. And then if you want to delete a user, you know, you could just highlight that I think my screens, I don't think you guys can see the bottom, but there's a, uh, a delete button and you can remove uh, a user that way, or you can push the uh, a, uh, the minus button to the right here, and that will remove the uh, user from the list. So that that's pretty much the gist of the user groups and the user list. How to use, add a user, how to remove a user. If you want more, uh, you know, detail as far as your specific site and how to set that up, just reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to help you out on that. Um, as far as setting up the users, removing users, and uh, users group if needed. So, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and move from uh, as far as covering the user groups, and we're going to go ahead and go to camera configuration. So, same thing here. Any any changes that you make in the system, you're going to automatically go from your home screen. You're going to go to setup. So, after you go to setup, you're going to go to your camera group. Okay. And then you go to your camera, and just so you guys know, these are multiple groups up here. A lot of your sites, you might not have this many groups. Typically on sites, you'll see a, uh, you know, one camera group, you'll see one point of sale group, and one cases group. Uh, on this location, there's just, as you can see, there's a lot of different uh, uh, camera groups, a lot of different locations that are tied into this group. So let's go over here and one, this one, perfect. And then you're going to want to select again, you're going to want to select your camera groups. And then after you select your camera group, you're going to go down below and you're going to go to devices. Okay. So when you go to devices, you're going to see here, you're going to see a whole camera list. These are cameras that are for this specific group, which is KI cams. Okay. And then when you select a camera, you're going to go ahead and highlight it. And to the right, you're going to see a field populate. Now, this this is a thumbnail, and that, that kind of gives you just a brief highlight of what that camera is covering. Uh, it's really helpful when we're setting up a camera, or if you guys are setting up a camera on site, that you can make sure that you have the right camera. So underneath here, this name here is what you're going to see populate over to the left. Um, you know, it, it's really good, and we, we notice that we go into some, uh, you know, some properties, systems, the best Thing to have is to have consistency with your naming scheme. Um, 
inside of eConnect, the same as you have on your uh, surveillance system. So then there's no confusion. You guys are calling the camera the same uh, name. Uh, you know, we're not, we're, you're not guessing, or if we need to jump in and help you guys, you know, there's no guessing of like, oh, do we have the right camera? You know, there's no confusion on that end. But again, it's completely up to you guys because the system's completely customizable. So uh, the description isn't necessary. Um, that's completely just another customizable field that we offer for you guys. So you guys, if you want to say like, uh, you know, description, you know, of course you have your name and camera up here, but if you want to go into further detail, that's where you're going to want to go ahead and add that. Um, down here is you're going to be your server address. Okay, that's going to be your, your SM address, um, where, wherever it may be. You might have multiple ones. You might just have one, depending on your particular, particular site. And then this site has exact vision, so don't be thrown off if these settings are a little different than you know your specific site. The, the idea is still the same, and uh, you know we can add other cameras, different types of cameras. But for exact vision, they require to be able to access the system, the system manager uh, IP address, the server port. Um, and that's how it identifies the camera when the application reaches out to the actual server itself. Uh, the username and password that was created for the eConnect application to access the camera. Um, so, and, and then this one also has a channel number. So again, it, it, this is specific to Exact Vision. Um, other locations like Hike Vision, you know, that might have Hike Vision, Pelco, um, Milestone, whatever, whatever it may be. They have their specific settings for their system. And this is the same area that you'll put them into. And then below here, you're going to want to make sure that you select the proper time zone. Um, that could very well throw off the time. And again, it's just going to lead to confusions for, uh, for people that are utilizing the system. Uh, below is an actual export, is the export server. Now, we create an export server in the configurations. Um, when, when we actually set up the system from you for you guys at the beginning. The export server is what the system utilizes when the uh, analy analyst, investigators, whoever it may be using the system needs to uh, export a video, make a case, you know, utilize that clip that they've downloaded. Um, hold on one second. Okay. Uh, you know, utilize that clip, that information that they needed to pull off. So th that's where all this takes place as far as the configuration of it goes. Um, so as, as you can see, I can scroll down here. You'll see the configuration change a little bit between the cameras. Um, for instance, just to give you guys an idea of you know, how it reaches out to that SM or you know, whatever system manager you guys have on site, you can see the server address changed when I went from this camera uh, to this camera. That means, obviously, that camera is being pulled from a separate server. And just to give you guys a better idea of how that's being handled behind the scenes from the settings. Okay? Uh -huh. And again, I'll just run through here. You can see that change. Okay? Again, they tried to make it uh, you know, as simple as possible. Uh, if you guys have something going on on your site, again, please feel free to reach out to support. And then also, we'll go over here on adding a specific camera type, okay? So let's say you guys have a Bosch device. Obviously, you're going to select Bosch. And, and so on and so on. Um, for instance, I'll just add a uh, Telco device. So I'm going to select the device. And I'm going to push on the plus button. And then it's, it's going to populate the new device that I want to add. Obviously, they don't have Pelco there, but again, this is just an example to show you the difference. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter uh, which type of DVR you have on site. You know, the whole configuration and setup is going to be the same process. So again, you're going to get the SM. You're going to get the uh, logical camera number, username, and password. That's what Pelco's system requires. As you can see, it's a little different than what the Exact Vision requires. But same idea, same principle. So I'm going to want to configure all of this, select my device name, and then I'm going to select the time, and then I'm going to select the export server so that whenever anybody is in the system and they need to make an export, they're able to do that. So 
refresh this, and I'm just going to go down here and delete a camera. Yes, I would like to delete that. So, pretty simplistic. Uh, you know, save all, delete. Anytime you make any changes, just make sure you go down here because that happens quite a bit. Um, you know, somebody will make a, a change and not quite sure why it didn't take place. And it's just you know a simple thing of pushing the save all button. Then we also have delete and refresh. Okay, good thing. Even if you want to go in here and check, you know, some things on the camera. Uh, again, if you guys change your SM. Um, move over to a different system. This is really, you know, a great place to understand and understand how that works. So with that said, we'll move over to the uh, next section, which would be device groups. Now, the way this works is, for instance, we'll take it up here one step. We'll go to KI cams, okay? If you look over here to the left, you'll see these groups. Okay, this is just another form of uh, customizing it and um, you know, really making it useful to your property. So you go over here and you have, uh, this, this is separated by little storefronts. Okay? Uh, depending on your property, you can do what you want. Uh, it's always a good, a good one to have, like say if you want a folder that says all cams. You can have all your cameras in that. Um, if you have a lot of cameras, it might not be the best solution, you know, but we, we, our customers range from anywhere from, you know, 10 cameras to, you know, over a thousand cameras. So it, it's really customizable depending on what you guys want to use it for. Um, so, so you can create your, you know, your folders, just a way to organize it. So everything that's at Coke, Coke Marketplace, right, we'll put those cameras in that folder, okay? Um, and, and so on. Say, you know, there's only one camera at Freestyle Cafe, but for organizational purposes, this is the best way to do it. And then if you add a camera at one of the locations, you know, after you add it to the eConnect application, you can go ahead and just add it to that specific folder as well. So we'll go back over to the setting up of that process. So we're back over at device groups. So then, then we see all of our same folders here. Okay? These are all the folders that we've created so that when we go back over here to our uh, screen, visually it's going to be easier and it's going to be organized to be able to find those cameras. So if we go and we select on one of those folders, you'll see those two cameras populate again. Um, so, and the way this is done is this is all the cameras that are available that have been added into the system. Okay. So if we want to start organizing things, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a folder called, you know, Coke Marketplace. I'm going to create that folder, and then I'm going to find the cameras that I've created. Um, they're not, they're not going to populate over here now because they're brought over. But, for instance, uh, if I go down to, or I'm sorry, up to AZ, you'll see all the AZs have been dragged and dropped over here. Um, I'll go ahead and just uh, make a test one for you guys. So, I have one now called test. I want to go ahead and put, you know, all sweet spot cameras. Oops, sorry. I want to put all sweet spot cameras into that folder. So I'm going to highlight test, and then I'm going to, uh, sorry. I'm going to go ahead and highlight those, and then I'm going to put add selected. So now those are in my test folder. So if you see, if I go up, you can see what's in, in each individual test folder. So if I go back over to my main KI cams, I now have a new group called tests. And if I drop that down, now all those cameras that I've added to that. <laughs> all right, well, I guess uh, this is a good uh, camera shot. So, um, uh, so <laughs> with that being said, you'll see my, uh, my test camera folder. Um, and all, all the sweet spot cameras that I had added are now in that folder. So I can go ahead and uh, close that folder. I can open that folder. But uh, as you can see, if you guys are familiar as well, the little plus button over here to the right after you make that folder is going to go ahead and open. If you click on that, that's going to open all the cameras at one time. So. As you can see, uh, right now, uh, they're not open at this point. 
they're uh, closed today. So there, there's nothing going on on the cameras, but you can see it opened all the actual cameras that I've selected for this group. And it looks like they might have a camera offline here that they, they're going to have to fix that one. But you guys can see the actual use of this when you make your folders. Now, if I want to close all those cameras at once, I'm going to go over here to the right. I'm going to go ahead and select the little X down at the bottom. And it's going to close them all out. If I want to individually open them up, I'm just going to select the plus button to the left of the camera, and it's going to open that one camera up. So that, that's how you go about setting up the groups, uh, adding a camera, setting up the groups, and then selecting what you want in that folder so it's vi visually organized and you know easily used. So let's say, okay, I made that test folder. I don't want that selection together anymore in that folder. It's going to remove the folder. It's not going to remove the cameras, though. Okay? So you'll still see you know, your cameras in this selection. So, so now, as far as that goes, if we go over to access control, we can actually select from here as well. We, you know, it's more customizable uh, settings and configurations. We can go over here. We can select a user, okay, and we can say, yeah, you know, this user, you know, doesn't really need to see, you know, these cameras. So we can select out of those cameras say, you know, this user doesn't need to see this device. So I can select that and um, I, uh, right, hold on one second. Okay, so, well, bear with me here. I'm going to have to find out why in this uh, specific uh, demo setup, why that is not uh, functioning as it, uh, as it should be. But at your sites, um, it should be working the, the, the way it's intended as far as being able to select a camera device and say, this user, you know, we, we don't want this user to be able to access these cameras. So they would be under, those cameras would be under the denied devices uses or, or denied devices for that specific user. So, so so again, it's just more of that customizable configuration, setting up everything else for you guys, just so it's a little easier, um, just to get that really customized. Over here, you know, this isn't really something that we want you to necessarily change. This is, uh, this is just to show you guys, uh, this is where we select that export server within the camera configurations. Um, with that being said, you select that export server, this is how the cameras actually know that this is where the actual camera in that case is going to be exported to. Again, this is not something that we really, you know, suggest being uh, changed or configured differently in any way. Um, if something was going to be changed per se in this avenue, we'd like you guys to go ahead and reach out to us. Uh, but I did just want to kind of give you a quick show of that section. Um, as far as uh, that goes, is there any questions on the user setup and com uh, camera configurations at this point? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go into a point of sale configuration and then we'll go over a little bit of associations as well because that, that really ties in, the whole, the whole thing gets tied in with the association. So as far as point of sale configuration setup goes, um, really once it's set up with your specific point of sale um, whether it be Micros, Infogen, uh, a version of Micros like Symphony 1, Symphony 2, uh, whatever it may be, or whether it's another one, those are just the three biggest ones that uh, you know we've came across. Um, you go to Setup, and then we'll be able to go to, um, 
for instance, we'll go over, this is this user groups, uh, one of them, point of sale setups. So we'll go over here and we'll go to point of sale settings. Okay. Now, what the way that Micros works, we pre-configure and we have a configuration file on the server. I can briefly show you that. It's not something that we really want to have altered or changed. But with Micros, we just receive a VSS feed to our specific server. So most of the changes are most of the configuration and most of the um, you know, uh, settings that need to be implemented are really done on the, the, the micro server itself. So the only thing you really want to worry about in here is, you know, our time settings, um, you know, uh, data retention that's going to be specific per site. Um, typically it is, you know, 90 days and uh, 1,000. Um, we have that written down there just so, you know, you can kind of see the default. And then the point of sale specific settings are based on your property again. So right here, these are the specific ones that are available on this setup. And you just select that. Now, each one's going to have a little different. With InfoGen, we need more information as far as communicating. That's a completely different setup. Um, I won't go into specifics here because I'm not quite sure, you know, what's individually at your specific locations. So I don't want to necessarily go in depth into that. But again, if you guys need assistance with anything, go ahead and reach out to us here at support. Um, again, it's uh, support at eConnect.tv and we'll be available to help you out if you need to go specific details if your uh, point of sale settings uh, you know, have been uh, messed up in some way or need to be reconfigured or you're switching over from you know, say InfoGen to, PO, uh, InfoGen to Micros or vice versa or whatever it may be, and we can help you with that. Um, entity setup, it's really not something that anybody really needs to uh, go into. Um, the way our system works is once we start receiving point of sale data from whether it be InfoGen, uh, Micros, again, whatever it may be, um, we, we get all of the um, terminal information, revenue centers, and everything else, and then that gets stored on the SQL database on the actual eConnect server, or if you guys host your own SQL, it'll be stored on there. So, um, yeah, well, the names and everything get sent to us from the system, and unless you guys want to alter those names, um, I wouldn't recommend it. I would stick with what the actual point of sale system is actually being sent to us. Um, but again, if you guys want to go more into detail with that, specific naming them, again, it, the whole thing about the customization is it, it's great and you guys want to utilize that customization, but you want to make sure at the same time as, for instance, your camera names. You know, be specific and stay, uh, you know, stay with the name, same naming scheme that you guys already have in your surveillance departments. Um, it, it just so it really bridges that gap and people can jump into one system to the next system and understand it. Same thing with the point of sale. Um, those names are provided from uh, the actual, uh, say, the micro server or the InfoGen uh, server. That's actually provided and given to us. We don't create those ourselves. Um, there are, you know, we can change names if you want to, uh, but again, I would stick with what you have as far as what's being provided from a point of sale setting to us. Um, so that, that's with the, the point of sale. Um, as far as we, when we start getting the connection from whatever point of sale server you guys have on property, that data just starts getting sent to us. Um, and the only thing that we do with that data is, again, we'll parse it in our SQL database on the eConnect server, or if you have a hosted SQL database, we'll access it that way. Um, so once we have the cameras and the associations, or I'm sorry, the point of sale uh, data flowing in, and we have um, all that information available to us. We can go over here and go to setup. We'll go down to associations, um, and then we want to go ahead and select. Uh, let's see here. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and select the one that we were working with already. We'll go with KI cams. And then we'll go ahead and uh, select KI, 
And this is going to be, hold on one second. All right, perfect. So what this does is, again, this is just the, the application that's been created here for you guys. Just trying to make it easier for um, you know the association and the understanding of how things get put together. Over here, we've selected KI cams, and this is going to show you. Um, it's going to come up with all the cameras that we have available under that user group. Okay, uh, it does take a little bit sometimes for you know if you have quite a few cameras for all those thumbnails to load. Um, but under here, it's going to show you what is actually associated with that camera. Um, again, we're always going to want to have a case server associated. That's something specific that we'll always want to have. The way that we make sure we can do that as well is go over here to cases and you can uh, associate this drag and drop, associate a case with it. And again, that's going to be utilized for uh, you know whoever may be the end user that's going to want to uh, you know create a case, create a uh, Hold on one second. I got all these thumbnails loading here. Slowing things down here for me for a second. Um, but you know, again, it's for that end user that uh, is going to make the clips. Is going to make a case file, and uh, so you're going to want to make sure that a case is associated with each one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all the thumbnails are getting loaded. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Perfect. Okay, so it, it took a second for those, uh, you know, those thumbnails to populate, depending on the cameras. And this is uh, one of the one of the demo systems we're using. So, again, as far as the case association, make sure that there is a case associated with each of the cameras. That's going to be how they're going to export. So, for instance, we'll go back over here to the point of sale. So, the way this is done is when, when the uh, point of sale server is set up, it's going to send us all of those terminals. We're going to store that information for those terminals. And these names are what OK. All right, sorry. I don't know if uh, we lost the screen there for a second. Um, so. In this association list, um, again, you have your cameras selected. We have our cases associated with those cameras. So under the uh, point of sale plugin, when I select that specific one, and this one's been named KI, okay, yours might be named you know, POS, whatever it may be. But again, it's all the same. And this is sent to us from your actual server. So when, that's, uh, when we do initial setups or sometimes when things get changed around, like here in support, we'll ask you, you know, can we get an association list of the terminals to the cameras? And, and this is where kind of that naming scheme comes into play, and that's why we kind of need to stick with what you guys have from those systems. Uh, because at this point, 
this is where we're going to go ahead and we're going to take, say, a point of sale terminal. We're going to associate it to a specific camera. As you can see over here to the left, the uh, camera here actually has, let's see here, one, two terminals associated with that camera. Um, and you can, if that camera shot has, you know, three or four terminals, you know, within its reach, you know, th there's no issue with associating, uh, you know, all those terminals that it can see in that association. Um, so with that being said, if I wanted to, for instance, drag and drop, say, terminal 2017 to this camera, I'm going to drag and drop that, and now this camera is associated with this terminal. So you say, oh, I made a mistake. I don't necessarily want that you know, terminal associated with that camera. Well, then I'll just take it over here and I'll throw it in the trash can and it deletes the association. So then that's no longer associated with that specific camera. So if I roll down here, I can see this. Now, this site has quite a few um, point of sale and camera. So let's see terminal, uh, you know, 2065. You know, for the sake of not having to scroll through everything, I go over here and I'll be like, you know what, I'm looking for terminal 2065. It's a nice feature, especially if you have a lot of terminals to sift through and you don't want to sit there and scroll and be looking, you know, you just go ahead and plug in your uh, uh, point of sale terminal, what you're looking for. Now, same thing goes over here. Um, let's see here. If I want to look up, what is this one? Banshee. You know, it already starts, you know, populating whatever's close to it. So I don't even necessarily have to finish the whole name, but anything that has the name Banshee in it, now is going to populate under there. So now this really makes it a lot quicker, uh, more convenient and efficient so that I can go through my associations um, a lot, a lot quicker. So, uh, and if you want to just back up and, uh, yeah, you know, I'm done looking at Banshee. There you go, remove the name and you have all your cameras available for association. Same thing with your point of sale over here. Um, so let's take one that we are familiar with here. If we go back, I'll show you our examples. If we go back to KI. Okay, hold on one second, guys. Since they're not open today, we are going to go ahead and select a uh, day that they were open on. Okay. Perfect. So, as you can see, um, now now we have our camera, and over here to the right, you're going to see this is term 2066. Now, that, that association took place back in the settings where we just were. So that is where you're going to see the data start to come through associated with this camera. Now, if we associated multiple uh, point of sale terminals, uh, you know, if you want to see your association with your, <coughs> excuse me, with your case server. So over here to the right now, just if I did that too quick there, over here to the right you'll see items. And you select items. And you're going to go ahead and see each of the terminals that have been associated with that specific camera. Uh, we can switch in between. Um, as you can see, this that terminal is not being utilized in this shot right now, so no data is going to be present. So over here, this one was used just recently. Let's see here. Yeah, about 15, 14 minutes ago. So it's still going to present that data that was uh, being done there. I'll click on that just to kind of show you guys that uh, running through there. Um, and then again, uh, this is more of a front-end and user uh, feature, but if you guys didn't know, that's a good way that we can check things out as well. If you actually click on one of the links, these are linked here, so you can go back to that point in time. You can kind of see what's going on, and this kind of helps us understand too if there's uh, any issue as far as any time sync goes, um, any things off from the point of sale transaction versus the camera settings. You'll be able to see that by seeing when these transactions are taking place uh, versus your time of your camera up here. 
And that's and if you guys are uh, familiar with our system, you guys will know you know that's really important as far as having the um, eConnect server and the uh, whether it be a DVR or a system manager synced on the time, uh, same NTP or synced from one another. Um, it's a biggie. So, so with that being said, again, over here back to this section, you're going to see your associations. You'll be able to jump back and forth. And over here, this is the the case that's been a case server that's been associated with this camera. So if we want to jump back and forth in between these items that we're able to, and available to use, um, you'll see that. And this is where the end user is going to go ahead and create, you know, their uh, their case and export. They'll be able to select their time that they want to export. So, um, so yeah, again, that's that's the uh, terminal associations. Um, with that being said, is, is there any other specific questions that anybody has that uh, they would like answered here that we didn't cover necessarily, or you know any other back-end uh, features that you guys are not familiar with or need a little more input on? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, uh, okay. Well, what we'll do is, uh, if anybody has any other uh, questions or any other things they need to go in further detail on your specific location, uh, just go ahead and reach out to us. Again, our email uh, for support is, uh, you know, e or I'm sorry, support at eConnect.tv. And uh, just give us a call if you need help with anything. Thank you.